before that I would like to congratulate each and every NGOs who have given the presentation. When I was in my uh, school days, from that time I was volunteering in, in NGOs. And because there are problems, there are issues. And because there are issues, there are NGOs. To do social work or to be in an NGO, you need not be a graduate from Tata Institute of Social Science or any other field. The qualification, the requirement is that your inner zeal, something should come from inside, then only you will be able to do the social work. Otherwise, you will be just tagging and one more profession. Those who are, have given the presentation and all of you, those who are listening to the presentations, it shows that you have your concern for the society. So I congratulate all of you. We are going ahead with the uh, panel discussion, the name of the topic which has been given to all of us is role of Indian incorporation in fostering grassroots and scope of public-private partnership in CSR, corporate social responsibility. I think uh, here I, the upcoming role is going to be very different uh, than what it was. I want to tell you that this is going to get professionalized as I see in the days to come. It, the, it's, it's a global initiative which is going to get professional and then it means that you need to account for the performance which is what I was telling somebody that I need to be accounting for the rupee that I spent. CII is also working out how private and public both participation you know can be clubbed for uh, addressing the global CSR issues that calls for a professionalism a project management approach towards CSR activities too what mileage will be derived by the corporates and um, how to involve NGO in between to implement it uh, faster. Um, so I think I'm the only person here who actually represents the social sector. I think over the last few years the way corporates have started approaching CSR is very very different. Today corporates are asking all the right questions. If you go into a meeting and you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what your operating budget is compared to your total budget. If you don't know what your five-year plan is, where, how many cities you're going to be in, how many students you're going to impact, they're going to say, thank you very much. Um, it was nice talking to you and that's about it. What you require is people to take that leap of faith and to believe that the people backing your organization are sound. And when, those, when a corporate sees all of that, and they see and they believe that you will make this kind of impact, there's no reason why any corporate should refuse to give you money or, or not see um, you know, the kind of story that you're willing to sell. You are fortunate lot. I cannot talk about my uh, colleagues, those who are in the corporate sector. You are fortunate lot. Believe it or not, how fortunate are you? It is your duty to pay back that, <laughs> that part of it. You will have to be very, very careful. When you are speaking to the people who are very sensitive and if you do not sensitize their sensitivity, if you do not understand their sensitivity, when you go to the corporate, you are very fortunate people like Mr. Pandey, Mr. Kaliskar is there or Nadal is there. But you need to be developed because see you have to give something to the society back. They are giving 2 to 3 percent back. You give 0.5 percent back. That's good enough for you. And that's what I thought as a teacher who is spending 27 years in this institute to tell you. Now, uh, we move on to the question and answer session. If you have question, please uh, ask the panelists. What are the, in, in, after implementation of the various NGOs, uh, what, uh, do you look for that, what they have implemented in this way, then what is the accountability of that part of it? You see, we have a proper feedback system on uh, every, each and every penny we spend. Depending on the you know duration of the project which has been taken as a CSR project, if it is a one year project, a two years project, a five year project, we have uh, periodical uh, reports on those uh, issues. Apart from that, for implementation purpose also, we send our observers um, intermittently. Sometimes uh, as an NGO, because they are very emotional in nature something, so do you help them to make the impact better on the society because as you are from the corporate world you can give them suggestions which are really worth so do you help in that way also so the culture which exists with us is uh, we really guide them look uh, 
your intention might be good, but the proposal is not customized as per the uh, rules uh, of the sub in the subject. And helping a NGO <coughs> with good intention may not harm you, but it can have implications. You know, you can be blamed for favoring a particular NGO or something. If a sir has told that uh, some company has an MOU with the government, so if on the behest of the government, the company is forced to do it, if they are not doing willingly, then is it a CSR activity? CSR is not a voluntary activity in a sense. It is a professional activity. When I talked about why Sandoz would go to the <laughs> leprotic patients, it's because that is something which I can do better than ONGC. Unless there is a competency with what you are able to do. I mean, you would prefer, and I didn't say that, you only do that, but I mean tomorrow if there is a flood and I'm, I, it's not that we're going to run away from it. But that is a natural calamity on an ongoing basis. I would tend to do that which I am good at because I need to use my CSR dollars in a most efficient manner.